I recently saw a couple of videos by Kitty and Bob Melendez on YouTube. I will put the links to those below. Uh, good videos on how they root for Tuniana rose cuttings and then how they bud graft onto those. Um, I've been teaching grafting for a lot of years and always say and truly believe that there is no one best or right way to graft a plant. Rather, the best way is whatever way works best for you. So they showed a perfectly good method and I would recommend that you try it. The methods that I use are somewhat different from that and so I decided to do this series of videos to talk a bit about how uh, we graft our roses onto Fortuniana and um, how it's co commonly done commercially in Florida by those who do produce uh, plants on Fortuniana rootstock. So this is going to be a series of videos and this first one is just kind of an introduction to the whole set. Fortuniana is a rose that was brought from China quite a long time ago, probably in the 19th century. It's named for Robert Fortune. Uh, you'll sometimes see it spelled Fortuniana with an E. You will sometimes see it written almost like a Latin name. Um, but the currently accepted name for it is Fortuniana with an I with the single quotes indicating that it's a cultivar, it's not a species or a variety of a species. It is known through DNA testing, what was suspected for a long time, that it's actually a hybrid between the Cherokee rose, Rosa Levigata, and the Lady Banks rose, Rosa Banksy. And um, looks a lot like a double flowered white Banksia, but with bigger flowers and heftier growth, and not quite as rampant a climber, although it will climb quite a long way. Um, it was tried back uh, around the turn of the 20th century in Western Australia as a rootstock and did quite well for them in their warm sandy soils. And so it was tried fairly early on in Florida as well. The uh, Glen St. Mary Nursery near Jacksonville actually offered roses on Fortuniana roots. They called it uh, a special strain of the uh, Cherokee rose, but it was Fortuniana. Uh, that appears in their catalog by the early 1920s. And then in the 1960s, um, Dr. Sam McFadden at the University of Florida did some formal research on the use of Fortuniana as a rootstock and found that he could fairly consistently produce a plant that lived longer, grew bigger, faster, made more flowers on longer stems and bigger flowers in Florida soils than the various other rootstocks that he tried growing them on. Probably the major reason for that is nematodes. There are several uh, soil nematodes, which are small, um, actually microscopic worms that feed on the roots of plants. And there are several species of nematodes that attack roses. Some roses have more resistance than others. So for example, many of the China roses grow just fine here in Lakeland, Florida on their own roots and don't need to be grafted. But other roses, especially some of the uh, complex hybrids like the hybrid teas um, may do all right on their own roots, but they tend to do even better if we graft them on something else. The California and Arizona industries are based on Dr. Huey as a rootstock, and it makes a very good root system in their soils. It will do all right in Florida for several years, but it, then it tends to kind of peter out. So Fortuniana to date is the rootstock that we found that actually gives us the best long-term uh, productivity and so for that reason, it's popular here. It's become popular in some other areas as well because of the extreme vigorousness that it gives to a rose and because you do tend to get more and bigger flowers out of it. That's not always the case. There are some roses that are just inherently very large growing um, that um, don't perform as well on Fortuniana. And I'm thinking particularly of some of the uh, early David Austin hybrids. Uh, two that we've grown that where this was the case were Heritage and also uh, Graham Thomas. With both of those, if I grabbed them to, the, to Fortuniana, I get immensely large plants that very seldom flower. And when they do flower, they don't make very many flowers. They seem to put all of their strength into making a uh, new bush. So for those, we tend to not graft them at all or put them on Dr. Huey. 
but for the great majority of roses, we find that we get really superior results if we use Virginiana. And because it is a rootstock that's not as easy to deal with as some others, it's not as easy to root from cuttings as something like Dr. Huey or Multiflora would be. It's certainly not as easy to graft as those varieties are. Um, I thought it might be valuable to have a couple of videos on how that works.